Hello, fellow systems engineers, and welcome back to a new episode of the MBSE podcast. Today, we are talking about the International Symposium, which was happening recently on Hawaii. And we are talking a little bit about Incosi EMEA, and therefore we have the sector director, Sven Olaf Schulze. Again, another German guy. Again, three German guys are talking in English, just for you. <laughs> But before we talk too much, Sven Olaf, please introduce yourself. That I could join here. And uh, yeah, my name is Sven Olaf Schulze. I'm a systems engineer and um, started from Deep Space Nine to lowest Earth orbit in my professional career. And I'm active since 20 years in Incosi and in the German chapter. And currently I'm yeah, representing European Middle East and Africa as a so-called sector director um, in the board of directors. So in the uh, central of Incosi. And yeah, that is a, a volunteering job. So, and I'm living close to Bremen and happy to be here. Yeah, great that you are here. Um, so we will also talk about the EMEA sector, um, but before that, we talk about the International Symposium. And before we start with that, let's talk about who's behind the symposium. It's Incosi. I guess most of the listeners knows Incosi, but well, let's start with a few words about Incosi. What is it uh, and what are the goals and what are the activities of Incosi? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very easy because you have to uh, know what INCOSI means. It's called International Council on Systems Engineering. So international means uh, we are worldwide uh, uh, um, uh, represented or currently represented in more than 50 uh, uh, countries. And uh, council means so it's a community of people, let's say, discussing systems engineering. And uh, the goal and aim is let's say, to promote systems engineering, to deploy uh, the best practice uh, and develop also systems engineering for the future. And um, uh, another goal is also to support, let's say, or the focus, the members are coming from uh, industry and all kind of industries uh, all over the world. And uh, we the other focus is uh, on education and universities. It's also one part where we try to develop and improve systems engineering in one language. And uh, we have also the personal members, let's say, and uh, government who, who is supporting us. And we also try to yeah, influence the government in the future of engineering, let's say. I heard that hey. when Encosi was chartered uh, many, many, many years ago, it was first named Encosi, so without the I, and they added they added the I later. So it first was only the National Council on Systems Engineering. Is there a fun fact behind that or a story behind that? <laughs> no, it's only that it started in America. Uh, so hmm. and it was the National Council on Systems Engineering was really the community around the United States of America. So really, this limited area of the Earth. And um, but um, yeah, as it is uh, the former Na uh, NASA or the, the European Space Agency or the space and the aerospace um, uh, is a worldwide, let's say, distributed industry since several and centuries. So uh, it was also introduced this methodology into Germany, into other countries, and so that it was developed and. Yeah, and then these local chapters or national chapters, we call them, are, uh, let's say, established. And as for example, the German chapter was uh, founded in 1997 uh, in, in Munich uh, in, in, uh, at BMW at the four cylinders. So, uh, and uh, also UK is a very old uh, chapter. And you see that these nations who are, let's say, active since years in, in aerospace and space were the first deployment uh, satellites. And therefore, then it was uh, uh, obvious that it's not only a national, it's an mm -hmm. international council on systems engineering. Okay, and maybe as a second basic question, we should clarify, what is the INCOSI Symposium? Or Symposium? Yeah. <laughs> 
it's as I mentioned, it's we are we the focus is uh, being, let's say, a democratic, let's say, or a council, uh, which means the very important um, part is the mem are the members. And we are conducting every year a so-called symposium, which in other words is a conference. So where people meet and talk about good best practices they experienced the last year in projects which are dealing with yeah, requirements, architecture, um, with uh, uh, model-based systems engineering, product line engineering. So all the topics around the puzzle of a complete set of systems engineering activities. So the symposium is an annual event where we meet worldwide uh, uh, or where members are coming from all over the world. And it's every time, every year in another city and we are moving around the world and there's a, yeah, so currently a, a rule that we are once in the, in the US in the, or in the so-called sector one in, in, in North and South America. And then we are moving to, let's say Europe and back to sector one and back to, and the next station is normally then a sector three, which is Asia, Asia and Oceania. So, and this is therefore we are trying to meet all the members uh, and they have short, let's say travel approaches. And so this time, we met on Hawaii also to get a closer relationship to Japan and Australia from flight time and travel purpose. Yeah. So most of the participants had a very long travel then this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Hawaii, great. So, and when was the symposium? Yeah, we started on 13th of July until 20th of July. So it's normally conducted from a Monday uh, or Saturday to, uh, to Thursday while mm -hmm. the first two days are tutorial days where seminars and uh, let's say experience can be exchanged in classroom and uh, where yeah, some model uh, exercises can be conducted where you learn by doing and exercise by doing, let's say, yeah. Okay. And what were the highlights or the hot topics this year? So I think this year it was really the, the as usual well, while we meet to listen to experience the papers are always I think uh, the 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 highlights and um, but um, uh, another highlight I think I really saw this time was where the keynotes and uh, where we really had very very good keynotes talking about sustainability about data analytics so it was really the match of history reminding us on the history, but also looking into the future that we have to deal with all these uh, problems and try to solve it by looking into the past and solving also the, a little bit the future, or at least not ignore the past. That was really uh, very nice talks and also keynotes. Uh, I think I recognize this time, besides again, the, next to the tool vendor presentations and demonstration of model based and um, and and, uh, and activities on the marketplace let's say yeah and is it a member only meeting or can i also join the symposium without being an cozy member it's open for everyone so uh, members get the reduction uh, mm -hmm. in the in the fee uh, but it's open for everyone. It's for newcomers, for senior, for experts. Uh, it's really a melting pot of networking and uh, yeah, exchanging of good and, or best practices, let's say. Yeah. And how many people were there this year from Hawaii? So we had, um, <clears throat> we had a hybrid version. So in Hawaii, in person, we were close to 800, 750, 800 people. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, uh, virtual, we had 150 participants, and so more or less with some guests and special guests, we were a little bit above 1,000, which was after our pandemic, let's say, a very good increase and restart, let's say, to meet in person. So this was really a quite nice experience. And Europe and uh, was really well presented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, besides Australia and US, as I mentioned, Australia was very close, but then on the next place, followed by Germany, France, UK. So I think we had a lot of good participation also from European Middle East and Africa. Oh, wow. That's great to hear. 
Yeah, so if this symposium was in sector one, where is it next time? Next time, I'm really proud because it's uh, in Europe and yeah. it will be in Dublin. Conducted um, uh, this time from Tuesday to Saturday from the 2nd of July 2024 in Dublin. So the next uh, following six days. And also we will combine, um, let's say again, tutorials, uh, panel discussions, and also, let's say, uh, sponsoring events uh, and so on, yeah. and networking for sure. Wow. And uh, maybe to good. mention, because uh, everyone also, it's not only for members to present papers, it's open for everyone and mm -hmm. uh, for every kind of, let's say, uh, activity dealing around systems engineering. And uh, so I think you have to upload the paper proposal and the paper until mid of November this year, so that we can review, select the best ones, and um, yeah, that uh, we are prepared for next year. So until November, mid of November, you can really um, yeah pro provide uh, papers, also panel proposals, and so on. It's okay. uh, online. It will be online then in the next weeks um, in uh, on the website. And will it also be, uh, again a hybrid symposium? So. Yeah, that we, this is planned, yeah. Okay. But we hope that as a lot of all the feedback was really to meet people, to have uh, interaction, you know, activities and exchange and networking, this is also the biggest value, let's say, where these the family is coming together. Mm -hmm. and uh, You can discuss directly with the same language, the same uh, uh, voice and let's say, uh, with different English, but uh, still <laughs> you talk about architecture, you talk about ports in ZSML2 or whatever. <laughs> so I think uh, it's easy to discuss and meeting friends and family is, uh, I think, always uh, uh, one of the benefits here. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. So this year was part of the virtual part of the symposium. And well, there were some nice presentations and so, and some, some discussions, but yeah. Um much, much better on site um, during the breaks and, and so on. Yeah, okay, so looking forward to it. Um, speaking about Europe, let's switch to EMEA. So you are the EMEA sector director, right? Right, yeah. So, so what's, what's your role, what's your task? Yeah, so um, I'm the voice of the member of this sector which means really it's currently really from Finland down to South Africa and from Israel to UK. And uh, uh, we have currently um, 20 chapters and I'm really proud that we are having a lot of emerging chapters. So where people in uh, countries like uh, uh, Tunisia and Saudi, Saudi Arabia are interested to create a chapter there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm I'm the voice in the board representing, let's say, the voice of the members, and I'm not elected directly by the members. Uh, I I'm I'm elected by the representatives, let's say, the chapter presidents, and this is the interface where we meet and let's say I'm collecting all the needs and also let's say the wishes, and um, going to the board of uh, director meetings. Uh, virtual or in person, and um, yeah, trying to also uh, represent the need of yeah uh, that uh, exchange working groups. Um, let's say all the benefits as it is really the council. Uh, therefore, the voice of the members is very important. And we are we have a sector in Asia o Oceania, uh, and uh, this is and his name is Serge Landry. And uh, René Steinwand from the sector one, which is now not anymore only North America, it's also Canada and also so uh, uh, South America included. Yeah. And I'm trying to be the net network and information, uh, uh, providing also distrib or distributing information between working group needs from Brazil, handbook translations, uh, all the needs I try to select, mm -hmm. collect, and uh, try to find a solution with, in discussion with the chapter presidency. Mm -hmm. so are there any uh, EMEA working groups? I know that Encozi has working groups and the local chapters have working groups, but are there also EMEA working groups? 
Well, um, it's uh, I think we have it's when it's international, mm -hmm. and but we are open. We are not really strict in any give, providing strict rules. So mm -hmm. uh, if we like, for example, <clears throat> the product line engineering working group was initiated more from Europe. Mm -hmm. So the nucleus is then the foundation that maybe uh, European chapters coming together and proposing, hey, we have a hot topic like product line engineering several years ago, and um, we want to create an, uh, a working group. And then we are creating an international working group but then it's mainly driven by Europe, but then it's also extended automatically to other nations. So I'm more the melting pot coming from ideas from local chapter, collecting the local working groups and creating then international, maybe at the beginning only represented by EMEA. But EMEA itself has no own, let's say, or we are not managing our own working group groups but I'm trying to help to get connected and to exchange because I think it's also very uh, a very good experience that uh, that not only you are discussing your requirements in Germany that you mm -hmm. exchange maybe also with different nations and opinions and really conduct let's say here um, uh, exchange best practices and document them in products like the guide how to write good requirements mm -hmm. or the competency framework uh, or the small medium enterprise working group was established mainly by Europeans, but now becoming international. And uh, let's say at the end driven by Canada, by a professor. So, but I think these are things uh, where I try to help and Europe and Middle East and Africa is kindly invited to yeah, propose something. And mm -hmm. I try to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you already named some of the topics which seem to be hot topics for, for Europeans. Uh, do you see some other trends or developments, especially in our sector here in Europe, which are interesting? Yeah, uh, I do not, not know the source, but uh, currently um, what if you're looking to the vision 2035, and mm -hmm. to our future, let's say our vision and what seems to be the future trends and the effort we have to 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 think about how to solve it and to try methodologies. Uh, we are just creating a sustainability working group, which is really a big topic and influenced mm -hmm. by a lot of other working groups. So therefore, it's not so easy to find a proper charter. What is a sustainability working group? But if you also see um, the impact and that new roles are coming in companies, taking care about sustainability, if we have job descriptions, and what does it mean now? How does maybe requirements from these groups, stakeholders influence the design? What sh how should we model this? Therefore, I ca currently we are, we are in the foundation phase of the sustainability uh, working group, which is, let's mm -hmm. say, yeah, close to be, let's say, chartered. Yeah. Cool, that's interesting. The the German chapter has also a sustainability working group, so yeah, very the likely right. very interesting. <laughs> and uh, they are also part of this driving uh, seats because yeah. it's volunteering. Nobody is paid, so at least we mm. need enthusiastic people who are interested. And if I remember well, also uh, Tim, you are also were enthusiastic in uh, let's say setting up the former ZML working group and mm -hmm. MBSD working group. So it's the same here. We are looking, let's say, for interested and members. And we have really one core team driven by Germany, France, uh, here from Europe and also uh, UK uh, and also South Africa. And they are interested to drive this. So therefore, I think um, it's uh, it's these uh, enthusiastic members who are then creating these uh, uh, working groups, but also related. We have a close relationship now to the Vision 2035. So therefore, mm -hmm. I think we should all be interested to participate and drive it forward to integrate this part into our systems engineering methodology and way of working to really ensure a sustainable future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Uh, another topic is uh, certification, and COSI is 
known for its certification program, but there's another certification program and uh, started here in, in Germany. Um, you were a little bit involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and now it, it is also a topic for EMEA, so it's not only Germany anymore, right? No, um, I, I think um, to, to be clear, the baseline is the uh, Systems Engineering Professional Program from INCOSI started um, with the principle of certifying people according equivalent to Project Management Institute, PMI. So more the American, let's say, view on certification. Mm -hmm. And if you compare it with project management, there are, let's say, uh, let's say as chartered engineers and there's a uh, um, in project management Prince too. And we have the German uh, pendant of, of that. So, um, and we have a Chinese certification. So INCOSI tries to really also look to other markets to satisfy these local needs. And mm -hmm. therefore we are all compliant. And the, the mother, let's say, is uh, the SEP program from INCOSI. So mm -hmm. there are compliance matrices and so on. So, but it's an opportunity here um, for the so-called SE CERT program to conduct it with, with a mandatory training. So it's a, a different approach of how to train and uh, uh, and uh, let's say be certified with another effort, but the handbook is the same, the ISO 15288 and also the principle. It's one organization where we try to, let's say, um, satisfy different stakeholder needs and market needs, let's say in that sense, with some different constraints and requirements. And this, therefore, we have a pendant in, in, um, in UK a certification mm -hmm. program, and we have uh, also in China, and in Asia, let's say a similar one. So uh, we are conducting this also for academia. We have a certification program uh, in INCOSI, uh, uh, let's say a similarity where now, for example, a lot of African universities want to get this academia certification on top of, of the master. But mm -hmm. here in Europe, uh, it's really um, uh, increasing and getting more and more popular to use these SE CERT program but mm -hmm. it's also a worldwide program. You can conduct, it can be conducted in, in Germany currently and in English, and also the tests in German and English. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a worldwide driven by, yeah, driven by German OEMs and companies with subsidiaries also in Mexico and in Bulgaria, where they mm -hmm. want to have a one, let's say European approach or how I, don't, I cannot find another word. So it's not in contradiction. We only want to ensure that we have one language and one understanding of systems engineering independent um, of, of, of the certification approach itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, maybe the one or the other listener now wants to get involved with Incosi. So um, how how can I get a, how can I become a member and what are my what are my advantages? Yeah, so what nobody knows or recognizes, a lot of uh, members are starting to be become a member of INCOSI, or they are in local, they see the local chapter of the German chapter or UK chapter or Norway chapter being active. So they become a member of the, of the local chapter, but the hidden agenda is you are, have a double membership. So when you are a member, you are a member in your local chapter, but also in the international council. So you can gain the benefit of the international council community, but also your local activities. Uh, I think this double membership is really a value also in with respect to fees to, uh, let's say, costs. Uh, because one is really now fits uh, pay one and uh, be member of two. <laughs> and uh, at least out of uh, outside uh, us and um, yeah you can really gain all the knowledge so the terabyte and google byte of of knowledge of products uh, for free uh, you can be part of the working groups you can be involved and uh, you can yeah get a network worldwide sometimes it helps that um, via the neutral environment of these volunteering organizations, you can discuss requirements in aerospace, independent, but having a member from every company to really see, okay, 
what are the attributes, what is our understanding and how to ensure that these uh, things are uh, in common. And the other thing is, yeah, being active in your local chapter, each chapter provides different services uh, and activities. We have uh, also local so-called uh, so corporate members, CAP members, uh, in Incosi International, but locally, they are now getting more and more connected. We are improving all the situation and discussing this so that uh, also corporate members have a benefit. And um, yeah, I, I, at the end, it's a big community. The value is the products. And also, I, I think you have to be wanted to be involved and being active. Then you gain the most benefit. If you go mm -hmm. to international workshops, to national workshops, being active in working groups, you can really learn very fast and you bring 10% of your time, but you're getting 100% feedback and value from a group which has the same interest. Yeah, yeah, I definitely can underline that. So it's a big recommendation to be a member of Encosi if you would like to be more active in, in systems engineering. Um, well, and Encosi is not a commercial um, company or so, no, it's uh, so it's not for money. It's uh, must work. Of course, it costs some money, but uh, just to enable that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah it costs a lot of time. Members. <laughs> and, uh, you have to spend a lot of time. At least some people have to spend a lot of time. So people like you, <laughs> uh, who have uh, roles in, at in Cozy. Um, so yeah, how do you do that? How can you? balance that your your work as an cozy EMEA director traveling to Hawaii uh things like that organizing I, I think you are involved in the organization of the uh, symposium next year and all the stuff uh, uh but well at the same time you also have a job I guess <laughs> so <laughs> how, how do you handle that yeah so it has to be really agreed so um if you are uh how personal or individual member, we call it, <laughs> uh, um, then it depends really on your interest. And if you can convince your your um, your company that you can also bring value into the company, I think then you may gain also some additional time and maybe also travel support to go for at least a, a, a national workshop or a international symposium or a conference in your local chapter. Um, so I think this is really depending now on 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 the person, uh, uh, but and also if you want to lead a working group, this is really a non uh, as a volunteering job, and um, um, yeah, it has to be negotiated with your with your company, or if I started really outside my company, really with my free time overnight, uh, let's say being active and being interested in. So it's really the individual, individual, let's say, how you get involved. If you are now working or having a role, and this is more now an administrative role, so it's really a commitment uh, to to be in person at the at the symposium and it, at the meeting in I, at the IW international workshop. So you have really you have to have these commitment by your company to get the travel cost uh, yeah. financed by the company, the time. And uh, we have in our policies there, when you read the job description of the sector director, uh, it says you have to ad 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 invest in minimum or in average, something like 220 hours per year, plus the travel cost. And this, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to negotiate for sure with your company, or if you are self-employed, yeah, with yourself again, <laughs> But at the end, yeah, it's really an invest. But mm -hmm. again, it's a it's a great value also still for me, meeting people, discussing, and getting the information from the hot topics and the needs, I think is really something where I'm really enthusiastic. And we have a lot of people being enthusiastic, but still we are looking for further volunteers. Um, uh, and they are still open positions which are posted on Incosi. So it's really being a little bit, um, how to say, enthusiastic and stupid <laughs> on the <laughs> systems engineering topic. But I think for me, it's really the value and the beneficial because it's, it's, uh, they are, uh, we, are we have the same mindset 
and um, I'm gaining a lot of things also for my daily business. And I could convince at least all of my uh, co former companies currently to invest in, into that. And I could manage this also. Um, uh, that was the advantage so far in my life, let's say. But um, to finalize it, maybe also to provide an outlook. Um, we have now more than 20,000 members and we are growing. And so this cannot be managed anymore by uh, volunteers only. So mm -hmm. we have an, uh, we have since the beginning an office. So some uh, gentlemen and ladies taking care about, let's say, being paid to manage the memberships and, and some other things. But still, mm -hmm. for example, the so-called CIO was uh, up to now a volunteering job to organize the complete worldwide infrastructure. And if mm -hmm. we are talking about 20,000 members, it's really a big effort. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to manage this and we are getting more and more professional in teams and infrastructure and he uh, our current uh, um, let's say um, um, uh, uh, person uh, uh, Barclay Brown he was really active I don't know he, how he managed the time but he was really consolidating uh, and doing a very very good job and this is now getting paid so we have mm -hmm. now since this year we have uh, also a so-called executive director so the board will manage more the vision, the future of, of Incosi, but the commercial side, the let's say the budgeting and the managing, uh, orchestrating, let's say the business is now in the hands of an executive director. And um, he, we just decided also that we will transfer this volunteering IT responsibility also to a full-time paid person because I think uh, it brings value because currently we had also subcontractors, but there was a business case now to really have uh, it one hand to also have a, a strategy managed by a fully paid person. So therefore, for example, the, uh, yeah, um, um, the person uh, is now transferred from a volunteering job. And there will be movements also in the future because mm -hmm. now due to the growth and uh, let's say the visibility and we want to be more professional, we will invest here in, in, in fully paid people also for mm -hmm. marketing and so on. Yeah. Okay. I hope and then I also can focus more only on, on, uh, on the <laughs> vision and being mm -hmm. back to the content let's say being more the advisor currently, because also currently I'm managing now IT problems in EMEA. So I think uh, there, I hope that will be more focus on, on that for this volunteering job and the future of systems engineering instead of give providing access for members, resetting passwords mm. and so on. <laughs> I think these are examples which are also currently in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And we hope that we can, let's say, relax all the board members to really focus on the vision and the future of systems engineering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking yeah. of the future of systems engineering, there's a this Fuse project kicked off, I think this this year or last year. So... No, it's a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. And together with the vision, right? With the vision 2035. So. Yeah, and also before it was a, a growth from a volunteering. Every, we have every year we have a strategy workshop. And currently, it's now a schedule for, um, I think, yet September. If yeah, sorry, I have to. But we, there are also the leaderships are invited. And normally, in these strategy sessions, we found out that we have some key topics where we have to be better. And based mm -hmm. on the uh, outcomes of the strategy session, Fuse was founded. And Fuse is the future um, uh, of systems engineering. Let's say. So, which means it's dealing really with the organization, with working groups, with being mm -hmm. professional, but also with the content. So, and therefore we had now a work package and really established a big program. Uh, if you compare it with other companies, as, uh, and this is also supported by financed subcontractors who are managing this as a paid project to be mm -hmm. in time that we are not, let's say, relying only on free time and volunteering jobs so that we have a little, a bit better, let's say, improvement and speed in this program. Uh, this was very important for us. And therefore we have this FUSE program okay. established with 
also in cozy members, but also with paid subcontractors driving these mm -hmm. work packages and so on. Okay. Yeah, maybe coming from the future back to your uh, history, um, you are practicing systems engineering for a long time and uh, maybe you can point out some projects or initiatives where yeah you are proud of or you're most excited of uh, from yeah your former time yeah my my uh, how much time do i have <laughs> <laughs> I <feel laughs> I'm, I'm really excited in 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 doing these systems engineering activities um uh, at least i It was by accident. I had really the opportunity to establish systems engineering in a renewable uh, company oh. uh, from scratch. So what we normally call greenfield. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and so I think that was one of the key topics where really having the freedom to, uh, to let's say, drive and set up the scene, the boundary conditions to, uh, let's say, convince the development and also the operations and the let's say the cto that we have to work together and uh, that uh, the the system is in the context not the operational phase or the development phase and we really had uh, a very successful pilot project so we were faster and we were better let's say mm -hmm. that uh, power on in, at that time, so I'm talking about uh, 12 years ago, uh, power on at that time also in the wind industry was not very uh, mature. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there was a, was a lot of rework and the reliability and availability of these prototypes were not very good because software was m meeting late, the, the, the structure on site and not never talked to each other before. So adjusting was con time consuming and uh, with our approach, it was really funny to see that motivated people and the group who have never done this before trusted in this methodology. And we really were very successful in uh, developing a new three megawatt turbine. So a technology uh, improvement, but also then at the end, it was funny because the certification body had every time as the experience that when we say, okay, you can book your travel to make the certification testing, uh, they said, yeah, okay, uh, we need three more weeks or months. Let's say we have a delay for sure. We will not book our travel. And at that time we said, okay, we will meet you in next week on the, at the prototype site. And they said, yeah. And then we called them, where are you? And uh, <laughs> it was, I said, ah, we have not booked our travel because we thought we need You need three more months, you know? And <laughs> so this was really one of uh, the exciting things. And uh, let's say really right. one of the topics where you really could, could show that if people are working together, being enthusiastic and open for this methodology, um, it was uh, really one of uh, the highlights, let's say, of being successful and uh, in, mm -hmm. in my career. There are several, several other topics, but as it was really something which I have never experienced before. Uh, it was really one of the topics I really love since years. Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. still in contact with the people. And um, yeah, it's really uh, fantastic. They are still working in systems engineering. And uh, yeah, so, and, it, cool. uh, and you see that the renewables really improved at that time. So mm -hmm. also the uh, <clears throat> competitors invested in systems engineering, getting let's say feedback of uh, design for transportation, the turbines are growing offshore mm -hmm. wind parks. We had a lot of failures and experience here. So I think uh, the methodology was then really deployed, not only because we used it, but it was at that time very important due to other boundary conditions and constraints. Yeah. Cool. Um, great story. Um... Yeah, uh, we started with the Incosi Symposium. Um, let's have a very brief outlook. The next big event for Incosi, well, there are several events, uh, but the next big event is, well, one event is the Nordic Systems Engineering Tour, I must mention it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice event, uh, conference tour from Linköping, Copenhagen to Hamburg. So who is interested in September? Um, but my topic is, uh, you already mentioned the IW, 
uh, the international workshop. So it's not a symposium, so it's, it's not a conference, it's, it's a workshop. So let's talk one or two minutes about that one before we close the session. What yeah, thanks. I, you? Uh, you provide me the opportunity because as I mentioned, the symposium is more networking, it's uh, uh, experience exchange and presenting results. And in the international workshop, all the working groups come together. The initiative of MBSE is coming together, working on very condensed in working groups, in sub uh, splinter mm -hmm. sessions to talk and drive it. So it's, a, let's say, where we take our time, 27th of uh, January, it's end of January, every year, end of January, starting uh, uh, with four days. I think it's now 31st or 1st of February. <clears throat> in Torrance, which is, uh, it's close to, or it's in Los Angeles. Torrance mm. is a, a small village in, uh, at the airport. So it's very nice. And uh, the working groups are meeting. Again, networking is important, but here you can really think 